Okay, it looks like we're ready. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Uh, October Downtown Action Committee hearing. And could we please start with a roll call? Roger Jensen. Present. Nick Millich. Present. Brian Chagas. Present. Stephen Graham. Let the record show that Stephen Graham is absent. Michael Cuevas. Present. Bri Brian McPherson. Let the record show that Brian McPherson is absent. Gregory Gabriel. Present. Kim Doe. Let the record show that Kim Doe is absent. Okay, thank you. Um, item two, you have uh, minutes in your package from the September 14 hearing. I was not in attendance. So does anybody have any comments or a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Okay, a second? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. All right, item three, report from City Urban Designer. Mr. Green. Good morning. For the record, Rick Green, Development Services Director. Um, wanted to share a few things with you um, right off the bat. Um, number one, I'm pleased to say that um, this is our organizational chart for 2023, fiscal year 2023, and this is part of a year-end report I just submitted to administration and a bunch of directors. Um, but I'm pleased to point out that we have a new Assistant Director of Development Services, um, Doty Glass. Doty, you want to stand up? But um, Dodie morning, just welcome. joined us last week. We're thrilled to have her. She spent a lot of time Palm Beach County early on in her career, uh, the last decade or so. She'd been working with Gentile. Um, I won't mention the whole name because I'll forget him, O'Manahy, but um, in the private sector. So she brings to us a, a mixture of public and private sector experience. Um, again, she's going to be working with both our divisions, both planning and building, and uh, we're excited to have her. Um, also over here, the vacant position for a city urban designer. Um, we fill that position, Claudia Ibaven. Um, she's an architect who had been working in New York City since 2013. She's expected to join us next Monday. Um, so she's got a lot to learn and uh, we'll bring her up to speed very quickly. So hopefully you will see her at the next uh, commission meeting. A um, few things I wanted to talk about, as I mentioned, we just had our year end report. I won't go through the whole report I provided to administration, but just a couple quick highlights. Um, you see our planning revenues over the last 20 plus years. Um, we did an excess of $700,000 um, in new projects coming into the city. That's the highest recorded in the history of the city. Um, August, uh, just a few months ago, was the biggest month in the history of the city. So we not only surpassed last year's high, um, we, we greatly exceeded that number. From the building standpoint, again, looking at revenues over a 20-year horizon, again, we hit a record last year and we blew past that by several million dollars. Um, over $15 million we received this past year. And this chart, I have a chart which I won't show you today, but has a direct correlation to our tax base. So this same cyclical pattern that you see going up um, and then down and then back up, that exactly mirrors what we've done with our tax base. So we're excited to see the activity happening there. Um, and then what's ironic is you see here in March of 2020 when COVID hit, we had a decrease, a significant decrease in our building permit revenue. And then after that, we experienced six consecutive quarters of building permit growth, which kind of surprises me. But of course, that is the migration that we saw as a result of COVID, you know, particularly from the Northeast, but also from California, Maryland, and some other states. When the second wave of COVID hit, you see another slight drop, and then we've been going back up. And again, this quarterly number is, again, close to near record numbers. So it's a phenomenal amount of development that we've experienced. Um, business tax revenues, we're pleased to see that we, we pretty much mirrored what we did last year. We were fearful that when COVID hit, there would be a loss of businesses in the city. Um, that did not happen. And again, the last two years has been as high as we've ever experienced. And then again, um, for our overall department, you see that um, we set a record last year and we blew by that by more than $3 million. Um, when you look at both our planning revenues, our business tax revenues and our building permit activity. Um, this is what we budgeted. So you see that we had 500 for planning. We collected 718. We mirrored what we expected in our business tax revenue. Building division is what surprised us. We budgeted 9.4 million, collected over 15. As a department, we were over $6 million what we budgeted for the year. And as a result, city employees got a 5% cost of living raise. So I think that helped. Um, and that's all I have for that. I won't go through the whole report, but uh, be happy to answer any questions you might have. No, that's great. Thanks. It's always very intriguing to see your reports. Thank you. 
Any questions for Mr. Green? Any? Okay. No, no, thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, yeah, let's see. Moving on. Anyone that will be speaking today, uh, or if you're public and make any comments on today's cases, there are cards outside. Just fill them up, fill them out, and bring it to the front here. We'll make sure you're heard. And when you, anyone who will be speaking, just make sure you stand and state your name and address. Um, and then here on the board, any ex parte, ex parte communications today on any cases? Uh, Mr. Chair, yep. no ex parte uh, communications, but uh, I will be recusing myself from um, case TDR case number 22-13 and code revision case number 22-10. Okay. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. We'll move into uh, cases for today. And uh, anyone who will be presenting or making testimony, could you kindly uh, stand and be sworn in if you haven't already? <coughs> Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thanks. Okay, we'll start with TDR case 22-12. To the staff's report. Mr. Chair, if I may, I'd like to do just a kind of a, a brief introduction that would address the, uh, the next two cases. And again, this is very similar to what you've seen before, so I won't be du duplicative. But um, well, that's fine. as you re may remember, we've talked in the past about um, the city's downtown transportation concurrency exception area, which is what we use to govern development. And again, you've seen this chart before. Um, suffice to say that we've built over 10 million square feet of non-residential development. We have 5 million square feet left. We had to maintain a ratio of residential to non-residential development. As you see in the green, we have exceeded the 6,934 residential units that we are required to achieve. We can go over that and that's fine. Um, we have set up a couple of mechanisms to generate um, TDRs in our downtown. You're familiar with what we did with the Seaboard Station, and we've talked about this before. We also had additional square footage from Jose Marti Park. And then more recently, we've been working with the school board, and we've drafted an interlocal agreement um, to designate four structures at the Dreyfus School of the Performing Arts, buildings one, two, three, and nine you see here, along with the archway in front of the main campus building. Um, that agreement was approved by the school board last month. It is going to our city commission on Monday, and basically this will serve as a pass-through. We are going to purchase the TDRs from the school board to the tune of $8.3 million, and then we will divvy up that $8.3 million of TDRs based on the developers that need those immediately. So between the, um, the Seaboard train station and the Dreyfus School, we'll generate a, a great amount of TDRs. So, as you know, and as familiar, with you've seen this before, we've done improvements to the Seaboard Station. Um, this is what it looks like after the improvements were made. We executed four separate agreements with uh, four separate developers to transfer the 378,231 square feet of TDRs. So on July 11th, we executed two agreements with the City Commission, so Resolution 177-22 was for the LINCAP development. Resolution 179-22 was for the Samar development. Those were before you a couple months ago. They were approved and we have to receive the funds that you see here um, for those TDRs. Today we're, we're reviewing the final two agreements that we had. Again, these were agreements that were reached with the City Commission. On July 25th, we executed the agreement with NORA. On August 8th, we executed the agreement with West Palm Beach Fern Holdings. And again, that's what's before you today. So we're simply following up on the, the last of the two agreements that we have for the Seaboard Station. And again, with Jose Marti Park, that was part of the earlier agreement with the Seaboard Station that we executed with Nora. So as you're familiar with, we went through a rezoning with Nora back in February. This was approved by the City Commission. Again, they are going to participate in purchasing TDRs not only from the Seaboard Station, but also from the Dreyfus Agreement once that is completed. And again, we have received six submittals, some of which you will be seeing in the immediate future. So we're working through those right now, um, but those buildings are for parking areas and buildings that are gonna be coming in. So they're anxious to get started and thus the need for some of the TDRs that they are seeking. With regard to the, the last agreement of the four, it's the residents of Palm Beach West. You have not seen this, but this will be coming before you probably within the next two months. Um, this is a residential development consisting of 361 residential units with a small amount of office. 
And again, the developer is taking advantage of the workforce housing incentive, so he's, he needs the TDRs to get to the height that they are seeking, um, 25 stories. So again, this is the second agreement that you'll be considering today. And with that, that's just a quick introduction, so it kind of sets the, the platform for the discussion that you'll be having here. Okay, well, thanks. Good morning, Chris Kimberly, Urban Design Planner. Uh, the first TDR case, 22-12, is from the Seaboard train station to the uh, Fern Street project, the Fern Street Holdings Group there. And again, just to give context, this is here at the corner of Quadrille and Fern. Um, they have a 5.5 FAR and a 25-story uh, maximum. Um, they need 102 TDRs to facilitate the rest of this project's development. Um, staff does find that the proposed transfer of development rights is in accordance with Article 4, Section 94-132. Um, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Okay, thanks. Uh, anyone, any questions for staff on this one? No. Motion? Motion to approve. Recommend... Um, um, recommend the Downtown Action Committee approve the transfer of development rights stack case number TDR 22-12 as listed in the staff report dated October 12th, 2022 as follows. A, the transfer of 102,000 square feet of TDRs from 205 South Tamarind Avenue to the property at 464 Fern Street, 418 Fern Street in the west portion of 401 South Dixie Highway pursuant to the requirements of section 94-132. Okay, you got it. All right. Motion, second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. We'll go to the next one. Thanks. 2213, and Brian's checking out of this one. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is TDR case 22 13. This is from the Seaboard train station and the Jose Marti Park to the TDR holding bank um, from Nora Holdings LLC. Uh, once again, staff does find that this proposed transfer of development rights is in accordance with Article 4, Section 94-132. Okay. Does that complete your presentation? That does. does. Any questions of staff? Oh. Any comments from anyone in the audience on this one? Not seeing none. Anyone make, make, make a motion? Uh, I move that the Downtown Action Committee approve the transfer development rights DAC case number TDR 22-13 as listed in the staff report dated October 12, 2022 as follows. The transfer of 165,495 square feet TDRs from 201 South Tamarind Avenue Seaboard train station and the transfer of 20,848 square feet from 401 North Flagler, Jose Marti Park to Nora Holdings LLC pursuant to the requirements of section 94-132. Okay, Perfect. motion is our second. Second. Second, all in favor say aye. 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 Can, I, can I just clarify, I see a 201 South Tamarind Avenue and I see a 205 <coughs> South Tamarind Avenue in some places. I just wanna make sure we have the correct address. Yes, the correct address should be 205 South Tamarind <coughs> Avenue for correction there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, move on to the next one. Planning board case numbers 1896 and 1897. Request by John Schmidt, Schmidt Nichols, on behalf of the Rosarian Academy. Good morning, John Schmidt, agent for the applicant. Just a couple quick slides for you here. Um, uh, this one's the Ariel Rosarian. Uh, last two years ago, we processed a uh, PD amendment to add the uh, middle field there that you see. Um, Rosarian has been able to uh, purchase the rectory uh, to the west as well as all the way down to the corner. So we're currently in for a PD master plan uh, to, do, to do this plan and add another field, uh, add some additional stacking to you know, alleviate some of, the, some of the stacking issues in there, two lanes on the back. Um, there's the rectory area, the rest of the corner that's purchased uh, eucalyptus right away uh, that we're asking to be abandoned and uh, what we called an alleyway, which is would just uh, land with the city uh, located right there. Um, 
the it's a 45 by 150 eucalyptus and 15 by 250 uh, alleyway total purchase price of six six hundred thirty five thousand uh, dollars uh, there's a, a shot of eucalyptus and a shot of the alleyway currently they're being used by the rosarian right now for drop off and, and some parking now so uh, ask for your recommendation of approval today and uh, if you have any questions uh, i'm here and linda trethway the headmaster is here okay perfect thank you mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions of the applicant right now no. Mr. Chair, um, John, yep. what's uh, what's happening with the uh, what happens with the organization of the campus with the, the the young ones? They're they're currently in that building, and that's what that's the one that's kind of being turned into the field. What happens there? I'm sorry, the the, the rectory. Yeah. Um, they're they're moving. So they're going back into like some of the main buildings. No, they're not. They're not on campus anymore. They're going to be moved. They're moving off campus. There's only I don't know three or three two sisters left. So. Um, they, they've sold us the building and we're going to be working on taking that down for our field. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Yep. All right. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Anything adi oh, additional from staff? Good morning again. Chris Kimberly, Urban Design Planner. This is for two uh, right-of-way abandonments and, well, partially two right-of-way abandonments and the sale of city property. Um, as John had mentioned here, the first request is for this portion highlighted in red here. Um, this is actually not an abandonment of a right-of-way um, per the Section 94.112 um, of our zoning regulations. This alley is actually a city-owned parcel uh, that was obtained from Rosarian Academy in 1956. Uh, and its purpose and use was always as a public street or right-of-way. The parcel is deeded as a right-of-way, but it is not platted as a right-of-way formally. Um, so just for clarification, we are recommending, uh, recommending uh, a motion of approval for this to go to commission as a right-of-way abandonment, but it will follow the city's process for um, the sale of city property so we'll deem the surplus and go through that process bring it to public uh, hearings and commission either through an ordinance or as a resolution um, as part of the staff report there were two conditions um, as part of the alley abandonment since this is no longer officially a alley abandonment we ask that these two conditions uh, no longer be applicable um, Prior, the first one was uh, with an alley abandonment, we asked for a one-to-one -one, uh, equivalent of open space to be provided. Uh, again, this is no longer applicable as this is a sale of a parcel, not an alleyway. Um, the second condition there was access to sanitation services and other utilities shall be maintained internal to the site. Uh, as John had mentioned, as part of their plan development major amendment, uh, we were working on the working on that with them um, to increase the garbage enclosures uh, and change things there so that is no longer applicable to this instance as well um, there is the suggested new motion for this item and on to the second portion this is the terminus of eucalyptus street uh, it's approximately 155 feet uh, east of north olive avenue this is a right-of-way amendment for clarification Staff does recommend approval of the abandonment with two conditions. The first is that uh, access and maintenance uh, easements are held over this portion for both utilities and drainage by the city. Uh, and the second condition is that there's a existing fire line there um, and this <coughs> connection must be maintained or the access to this must be maintained. And if there are any proposed changes to relocations of this line or um, if curb cuts or things change with the master plan, uh, plan development amendment, then uh, those changes must be approved by city fire department and utilities. And that uh, is all I have for staff presentation. Any questions? Okay. And we're, we're simply looking at the abandonment, nothing to do with the site planning, correct? Correct. But we do still uh, appreciate a recommendation to go forward to commission with that as well. They would like to hear the Okay. Downtown Action Committee is okay with the. Does anyone have any treating it as an abandonment? Right away. 
I have, however, a quick question, just out of curiosity. How do you determine the valuations for these alleyways and, and, and abandonments like this? Uh, we did have an appraisal done, an independent appraisal done for the property. Um, I believe it is to the developable land of the um, alleyway or right of way that is abandoned. Um, so it's to current market standards. I'm not sure the total appraisal process, but uh, it was independently appraised. Good, good, perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any comments from anyone in the audience on this case? Okay, seeing none, we'll close public discussion. Uh, if there's no further questions, would anyone like to make a motion? Motion to approve. Okay, um, second. Oh, you, need, you want to read it? Yeah, I have to read it. Can I put those back up? <laughs> uh, motion to approve. Um, case number 191896 and PB case number 1897. Um, I move that the Downtown Action Committee recommend approval for the abandonment of the north-south alley between 7th Street and Eucalyptus Street, east of the Rosarian Academy campus, as listed in the staff report and staff presentation dated October 12, 2022. The motion is based upon a determination of the testimony presented at this hearing, along with the application submitted, constitute a preponderance of competent substantial evidence. The Downtown Action Committee hereby makes findings of fact that the alley abandonment requested satisfies all of the criteria of the City of West Palm Beach Zoning and Land Development Regulations, Chapter 78, Article 7. I move that the Downtown Action Committee recommend approval with conditions for the right-of-way at the terminus portion of Eucalyptus Street, approximately 155 feet east of the of North Olive Avenue as listed in the staff report and staff presentation dated October 12, 2022. One, separate easements for the access to and maintenance of both utilities and drainage shall be maintained by the City of West Palm Beach. Such easements shall be reserved prior to the final City Commission approval of the abandonments. Two, access to the Fire Lane DDCV for Rosarian Academy must be maintained. Any proposed utility relocations or closing of the Eucalyptus Street curb cut that may restrict or impact emergency access must be approved by both the City Fire Department and Utilities Department. The motion is based on a determination that the testimony presented at this hearing, along with the application submitted, constitute a preponderance of competent substantial evidence. The Downtown Action Committee hereby makes findings of fact that the alley abandonment requested satisfies all of the criteria of the City of West Palm Beach Zoning and Land Development Regulations, Chapter 78, Article 7. Perfect. Uh, motion, is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with it. And moving on to code revision cases. Code Revision Case 22-10, City Initiated Request for Text Amendment to Zoning and Land Development Regulations, Article 4, Downtown Master Plan. And again, uh, we'll let the record show Brian is recusing himself on this one. Thank you. Uh, city Initiated Request for Text Amendment um, to the um, Downtown Master Plan, Section 94105, Section 94111, and Section 94113 uh, regarding existing off-site accessory parking lots within residential subdistricts, as well as a, a amendment to Section 94127, Railsford Park District, and Section 94128, Northwest Neighborhood District. Um, this is to modify uh, provisions regarding the private open space requirements. For the first section here, uh, in our use requirements table, uh, certain uses and provisions are in there uh, that have special um, circumstances, one of these being the P16 use here for existing accessory surface parking lots. Um, this includes provisions to upgrade these existing lots within the residential neighborhoods. Uh, these were established prior uh, without permit. Um, we have a figure online and in our code here, figure 4-2, which identifies where these existing parking lots currently are. The vast majority of them are within the uh, Northwest neighborhood with I believe one or two uh, in the Brailsford Park area. Uh, some examples here of what these lots currently look like today. Uh, they do not comply with 
current city surface parking lot regulations. Um, many of them are, as you see here, uh, barren spaces, uh, overgrown with grass or striping and uh, landscape elements are not up to code compliance. Um, so the proposed amendments uh, look to simplify the requirements for these uh, typical surface parking lots um, and to extend the time frame for the improvements to these lots. Uh, currently the CRA is proposing language um, to work with the churches and owners of these surface parking lots. There is an abundance of uh, new commercial development happening along the Northwest Corridor. Um, and the CRA is proposing a grant to support these ch churches with parking lot improvements. Um, and as part of that grant service, the uh, parking lots will be shared uh, for use with also the commercial developments happening in those neighborhoods. Uh, again, the intention is to provide an improved uh, parking space, uh, enhance these existing spaces that currently are in, not in compliance, um, and create uh, additional options and capacity for both current residents, uh, the church users, and uh, those commercial businesses within the neighborhood. And some examples here of businesses that are being reestablished or uh, redeveloped within the neighborhood um, that own nearby surface parking lots or could benefit from the use of these shared surface parking lots there. And this is the proposed text amendment is in the staff report here, but just to highlight um, removing some of these provisions regarding the type of material uh, limitations that could be used on repaving or retreating these parking lots, um, altering the setbacks for these parking lots, but still maintaining that a landscape buffer uh, is in place. Uh, and then also providing provision for uh, chain link fencing um, should it be vinyl coated which is similar to other uh, instances in the neighborhood and the downtown. The second amendments are for the um, changes to the Brailsford Park Northwest and their TDR sections and this is regarding private open space. Um, so it's the city's desire to remove there currently is a 12 percent private open space provision for lots less than 25,000 square feet um, within their respective building requirements tables. Um, many of these districts kind of highlighted here, we have the NWD4, NWD2, NWD5, um, there's a few others within Brailsford as well. Um, these are catered toward you know, lower scale residential, lower scale commercial, and some mixed use developments. Uh, these Parcels and properties are already really small and confined. Um, your standard there is a 50 by 140, so just around 7,000 square feet. Um, and with this 12% private open space requirement, you know, we're already eating up another 800 to 900 square feet of these parcels. Um, and that's not including setbacks or any landscape buffers and requirements as well. Um, so staff finds that this provision is a little restrictive on these smaller parcels. Uh, we've had many projects come in that struggle to meet this requirement and oftentimes they're designing to the standard rather than to provide the amenity or the intention of that open space um, to their users. So we believe that this is a, a good provision to remove from these districts. Again, these are all the applicable um, districts that the amendment would apply to. And in our chart here, you can see um, this is the 12% requirement we're asking to remove. Um, for parcels, 25,000 square feet or larger, so if they do uh, agglomerate these parcels into a larger development or project, there still is a requirement. And um, for many of these, this is a 18% private open space requirement. But with a larger parcel, again, this can be accommodated through a rooftop deck or um, a plaza space or something along those lines. And staff recommends approval of both of these amendments based on the finding that the petition meets all eight of the amendment standards found in section 94-32. Um, and those are the standards there if there's any questions. Any questions? 
No, I mean, it seems relatively clear and consistent and, you know, as long as you all are in agreement with this change and its consistency, I don't see any issue with it. Okay. Um, Fergie, anything? No. Okay. Are you making a recommendation on this or just a formal? Oh, any, oh I'm sorry. Does anyone in the audience have any comments on this uh, discussion? Okay, seeing none, we'll close public discussion. Uh, any other further discussion here? Questions for staff? Yeah. Okay. Right. Someone want to make a, do we need to make a formal recommendation of approval? Yes. Yeah. Someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve CRC 22-10. Okay. Is a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, move on to number item two under code revision case. This code revision case 22-11. City initiated request for text amendment to the zoning and land development regulations, Article 4, Downtown Master Plan. Uh, this item has been continued to next month's meeting. Nope. Okay, look at that. What do you know? <laughs> then we're done. <laughs> any any uh, unfinished business or new business? Anybody have any items to discuss while we're here together as a group? I had a couple of questions, just as a general and uh, catch up from the last meeting. So uh, I was curious as to if um, the transit village has been back and working on the conditions of approval that was for yes. that last meeting. Um, so staff has met with the applicant and the design team of transit village. Um, we discussed the conditions that Dak spoke to uh, with the streetscape, not touching that. Uh, working on the facade articulation and planar break requirement, and then just addressing those final um, ins and outs of the PPRC comments from the various divisions. Um, so they're back to the drawing board on those fixes. Uh, they should be submitting a revised set of plans for us to review and uh, disperse to the departments, um, but they're, they're working on it currently. Great, thanks. Yeah, um, Madam Attorney, was there any further uh, um, understanding of the legality of it and based on the discussion that happened at the last meeting, we were concerned that there might have been a reeling back of the approval based on the last approval. Did that, did that get researched or did anything come out of that? I, I'm not aware of any appeals having been filed. Okay. Thanks. And then just also out of curiosity, the building that uh, uh, is at Banyan and Tamarind, the one with the micro units, I think that was the one that, that just seems like it's, I don't know, taking forever. Is there an issue with that building or is it gonna be uh, just, I guess, completed when it's completed, interested in how the micro units are gonna work and downtown, et cetera? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure where they are with the construction process, I know that's, Pretty close to finalizing. Uh, we do have them submitting for the replats, which is a requirement for um, final CO. So that that is coming toward city commission within the next month or two. Um, but in terms of their construction schedule, I'm not quite sure where they're on that. Thank you. And then likewise, 550 quadrille. Just out of curiosity, it again seems like you know sometimes you see people working, some sometimes you don't. Is is that just on its own track or is there anything yes that, that is a continuous process um, there have been several minor site plan amendments submitted um, for some ground revision or ground floor revisions to the lobby and drop-off spaces um, there's also been um, inquiries into possibly upper story revisions to the amenity decks um, the ground floor uh, amendments to the drop-off space in the lobby there has been in review. Um, I believe we're waiting on a resubmittal on that end, but in terms of the overall um, construction project, again, they're kind of going at their pace there. All right. Thanks for the updates. Yeah, absolutely. That's all I have. Okay, sounds good. Oh, one last update. We had talked about all of the metered parking in the downtown at one of the last few meetings. It looks like it's changed back to metered only until midnight. Is that correct? in general or do they vary block by block <laughs> uh, don't worry about it it I'm looks like sure. it, it has been changed to some degree right yeah. yeah all right anybody else have anything 
Okay, super. We'll adjourn today's meeting. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate Thank you. It.